Case was the sharpest data thief in the Matrix until he crossed the wrong people and they crippled his nervous system, banishing him from cyberspace. Now a mysterious new employer has recruited him for a last chance run at an unthinkably powerful artificial intelligence, with a dead man riding shotgun, and Molly, a mirror-eyed street samurai, to watch his back. Case is ready for the adventure that upped the ante on an entire genre of fiction. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I am your host, Liam, aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler free review of William Gibson's Neuromancer. Neuromancer is a 1984 novel in the first in the Sprawl trilogy by William Gibson. It was also Gibson's debut novel and was the winner of the Hugo Award, Nebula Award, and Philip K. Dick Award. I believe this is the only novel to ever win all three. It actually starts in Japan um, at Chiba City, a hotspot for expats. Uh, after stealing from his employers uh, with his last job, Case was fired and beaten to the point where he can no longer access cyberspace. He's a washed up hacker and is about to be hired for one big final job. Now, this is, how do I say this, basically the beginning of cyberpunk um, as a genre. And I know some people back before it started getting called cyberpunk would wanted to call um, the genre like neuromancian and like stuff like that, I think. Uh, but this involves a lot of drugs, plastic, technology, sex, it's definitely an adult novel. It's pretty cool, though, too, because it also does involve going into space, which is not what I was expecting from a cyberpunk novel, uh, but I haven't read very many of those. It's interesting. It's a nice combination of high-tech and low-life, and it's um, how it explores post-human humanism, rather. And also, it's honestly kind of gross um, in what it makes. Um, and, it, you know, even though it's a poster child of cyberpunk literature, um, there is also, of course, artificial intelligence and how that interacts with this post-human state. It's a sort of um, noir detective story in, in this setting. It's not the most gripping, in my opinion, but the atmosphere is perfect. And this book is what's made that atmosphere, right? So it's essentially the first to take these things. And that's why this is the cyberpunk novel. So, I mean, there's a lot more credit there than just nailing the atmosphere. It made the atmosphere, essentially. So I think the opening opening line from this book is exceptional, and it is a very famous opening line as well. And from the first chapter to the end, um, this is just an interesting story and a good, full of good atmosphere. It involves a particular um, set of jargon um, that I think some will find a bit much. Um, apparently... I didn't have that much of a problem with it, and so apparently I did good, but I, I, I think I passed with like a C probably, because um, I just, I don't know, I, I didn't think too much about the words. I don't actually think it is overkill, but part of the world, um, uh, the low life high tech, and you know, cyberspace being involved in so many things, you just, they wouldn't talk exactly like we would, right? So as far as characters go, we have Molly, who is at the back of the book described as a samurai. She's pretty interesting. I think he had written about her before um, this novel came out. So he'd written short stories, I believe. I think Johnny Mnemonic is another character. No one's sure, sure on that, but Case is our main character. It's also interesting we see people like Zionist, um, and there's also a sort of heist, um, a, a, a unwilling one for Case. Um, but we do also see a lot of humanity um, or rather the absence of humanity in some cases lots of death lots of neon uh, japan's pretty cool um and we even get necromancy which is pretty awesome right it's sci-fi it's necromancy um but you know anyways i again we do get like super intelligent ai we also get going into space which i didn't think it would really get into those other things i thought would be more um, part of other sci-fi genres but well, i was wrong it is divided into four parts um, with, uh, well, there's a short coda, actually, that acts as an epilogue at the end as well. It's also, again, like I mentioned earlier, the first of a trilogy, though it works as a standalone, and I hear the next two books are also, um, well, they also work as standalones, uh, but they're all set in the same world, and I don't know a lot of people that have actually read books two and three, though I have book two, so I will read that one somewhat soon. Um, but again, I'm very impressed with Gibson and that this was actually his first novel, uh, maybe one of the best debuts ever um as far as like accolades and like influence goes not my favorite debut ever uh but it's 
pretty impressive. So, um, anyways, I think in some ways, uh, maybe it is a little bit outdated, right? Like, a lot of older sci-fi is, I mean, it's typically a problem, right? Like, there's no cell phones, right? This is set in the future, and he doesn't predict cell phones, and that's fine. But, for example, there is the USSR, which obviously didn't pan out, and there is no United States, which, as of right now, that I mean, the U.S. still exists. So it's pretty interesting. Um, but overall, it's still pretty impressive. I think you should read it um, just for the sake of it. Like, I don't know, I maybe... Decide for yourself if it would be enjoyable, if it'd be your thing. But if you think you could enjoy it somewhat, then strap in because it's one wild ride. It's from Liam Williams Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.